Look for it and you will find it. That should be the motto of analytical chemistry these days. Why? Because my colleagues, the analytical chemists, are so adept at finding substances down to trace levels. They can find contaminants down to PPT, parts per trillion. You know what that is? That's the width of a credit card compared to the distance between the Earth and the Moon. That's pretty impressive. Now, why do I bring this up? Because I so often get questions about water, tap water, bottled water, because people have usually read an article about uh, phthalates or bisphenol A or nonyl phenol or antimony oxide or chloroform or a host of other contaminants found in water. And yeah, these can be found because these days, as I said, you can find almost anything if you look for it. But what does it all really mean? Let me give you an example. Uh, the measure that we use normally is the TDI, the tolerable daily intake. That's the maximum amount that someone can ingest every day, regularly for the rest of their life, without that substance causing any problem. How is this determined? It's determined usually with animal studies. You look for something called the No Observed Adverse Effect Level, or the NOAEL. You start feeding the substance to an animal, usually a rat or a mouse, and uh, monitor what happens to them. The maximum dose at which nothing happens to them is the NOAEL. Now, in order to arrive at the tolerable daily intake for humans, that is divided by a safety factor of 100. All right, so let me give you an example of what is found, because there are numerous studies that come out all the time about uh, contaminants in, in water. There's a wealth of literature on this. So let me first of all tell you about... Uh, polyethylene tetraphthalate, which is the plastic that is used to make these water bottles, and a catalyst called antimony trioxide is used to make that plastic, so it's no surprise that trace amounts of it end up in the water. All right, well, what is that amount? We can, of course, measure it. And it turns out to be one-sixth of the tolerable daily intake, which, you remember, already has a hundredfold safety factor built into it. What about something like bisphenol A or BPA? Now, BPA is not used in the manufacture of, of uh, that plastic. So how can there be any of it left in, in the water? Because BPA is used to make epoxy resins, which are sometimes used in water pipes. And bisphenol A is used to make polycarbonate plastics. And industrial effluent can contaminate drinking water supply. So trace amounts can end up in our water. And BPA is one of these endocrine disruptors. That is a substance that, that can interfere with uh, uh, hormones in the body. But how much of it ends up? Once again, we can do the calculation because we know what the TDI is. Uh, the TDI is uh, uh, 50 uh, micrograms per kilogram of, of body weight, we can make the usual calculations, find out how much is present in the water. Anyway, it turns out that what we are exposed to in bottled water is one twenty-two thousandth of the TDI. So what does all of this mean? Now, it's true that the TDI is based on animal studies, which are done over a relatively short term. So it doesn't really tell us what might happen to humans who are exposed to this over four decades. But that's a study, of course, that cannot be done. So we're left to make a guess, hopefully an educated one. And that is that when we're talking about levels of contaminants that are down to one twenty-two thousandth of the, of the acceptable daily intake, that this is not something to lose sleep over. And that is our cup of joe for today. Oh, that cup of joe? That contains, oh, well over a thousand different compounds, including a number of carcinogens like furfural and formaldehyde and caffeic acid. But of course we know 
Coffee doesn't cause cancer. If it did, we would certainly know that there is not people drinking enough coffee. So in science, numbers matter. And that is our cup of joe for today.